Hey, how's it going everyone? Brad Smith here with HealthLink, looking for the top health, fitness, and businesses throughout the world. Today I'm joined with Greg Nowacki, owner of Captive Branding Agency. How are you today, Greg? I'm doing great, Brad. Thanks for asking. Thank so, you so much for joining me. Tell the audience real quick um, who you are and what your business is. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Greg and I own a digital marketing agency called Captive Branding, where I help health and wellness uh, providers as well as businesses increase their presence online and get more customers. All right, so I kind of want to dig into that real quick. So what do you mean brand online, get new customers? A lot of people know this, but a lot of people have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So what I've found with a lot of businesses and just uh, like chiropractors, anybody in the health and wellness industry, they are solely focused on working in their business, which is a good thing, but the challenge comes from them not connecting with people that are interested in their services. So while they might be providing the best customer service or the best service possible for their customers by um, helping them with their health, the challenge for them is getting more people in contact with them. And for most of them, they're still using some of the traditional methods, uh, whether it's like flyers or they just have a website, but they're not actually connecting with them on a much deeper level, which is why I come in and try to help them create a more omnipresence online. That way people are seeing them in all different areas and understanding that the value that they're providing is much deeper than what they're just seeing online. Yeah, definitely. We always say it's easy to meet someone face to face, build a relationship, but how do you build a relationship with a website visitor? Yeah, I mean, just having a website is not enough these days. You gotta go way beyond that. Yeah, and it helps to have, we people hire these professionals for their um, expertise and what they're good at. So if you're not an expert at a website, it's hard for you to have your hands in everything. You yeah, know, working absolutely. in the business and then trying to build a website on your own and learning every everything. So it's always good to have some sort of coach or mentor, mm -hmm. someone there to guide you and help you, um, no matter yeah. how deep it is also. Yeah. So, uh, before the show, you told me a quick story about, you know, why you got started in this industry. You know, give us the background real quick. Yeah, absolutely. So at 17, I started working in a pharmacy and I did that for close to eight years. And I went to college thinking I was going to become a pharmacist. I think it was around like year three. Um, so I didn't want to become a pharmacist, but I still liked the industry as a whole. And when I graduated from college, I graduated with a major in advertising and business. But when I went to go look at advertising agencies, the amount of money that they're willing to pay was just very small and I just couldn't live off of that. I ended up going into pharmaceutical sales because the industry paid very well. So I did that for three years and I think it was around like my first year, I started seeing like the pitfalls of the industry and realizing that that's not necessarily something I was in line with like my purpose and what I wanted to do. And so I started looking back into my roots of marketing. And so now here we are uh, about two years into it uh, I started working on building my list of clients, working with people to help them increase their presence online and helping them provide more health services to people in a better way. Yeah. You know, I, I like that you kind of have that backstory. You got your hands in different things and saw negatives and positives and then were able to bring it to your business. Now, one thing I like to uh, point out about your website is on the front page, it says it's not the about me section, it's about you section. Uh, yeah. You want to find out what's about them and your client. So you think that's a key when you meet a new client is seeing what their goals are, and asking about their business? Yeah, absolutely. Everything I do when I'm talking to a potential prospect, it's all about discovering what it is that they need. And one of the biggest things I found is that sometimes they don't even realize some of the problems that are going on in their business. And so a lot of times like I'll do an analysis of a website, their social media before I even talk to them, because I want to have something to present them to say like, Hey, are you aware that like, you don't have this and this might be potentially affecting your ability to connect with people. Um, I always want it to be about like, what is their pain points? Like what is it that they're actually having problems with on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it they're not able to get enough uh, patients into their business or is it they're not getting enough people to come back as frequently as possible? Whatever their biggest challenge is, I really want to uncover that. And sometimes it does take a little bit of digging. Um, you know, us as people, we, we tend not to want to like realize what it is that's actually happening in our business. We kind of mute it out. And so it's kind of like putting up a mirror to them and just saying like, Hey, this is what it looks like. I want you to understand like some of the problems here, but there's also a ton of opportunities here. How can I help you? It's all about them. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So I want uh, you to pick out one thing you see often on websites that they're doing wrong. 
Maybe it's just something minor. I have one personally. We'll see if it's the same one. Okay. So first thing I always look for whenever I go to anybody's website is if they have the Facebook pixel installed. Oh, I was close. <laughs> Mine had to do with Facebook too. Yeah. So, um, so the Facebook pixel, I, a lot of people don't understand the importance of it. Um, and it's simply just a way of getting your message back in front of people. And it doesn't matter like what area you're in, even in like the health industry. I think a lot of people are concerned because of HIPAA, but you still have to figure out a way of reconnecting with people and bringing your brand in front of them more than once. Most people don't understand that like if somebody comes to your website, there could be like 10 other things going on in the background, like whether it's kids crying, maybe like they're running out the door because they're late to work. Maybe they just got distracted and now they were on your website. They were looking at your stuff. They're like, oh, like I'm really interested in this guy. And then yep. something happens and they leave. Well, now you've lost the opportunity to reconnect with them. It might not be days or weeks before they start to reconsider you. And then even at that point, like if they only see your website again a second time, that's not enough for them to be like, oh, I need to get in contact with this person. It actually takes on average now five to 12 impressions before somebody's like, oh, I need to do something about this. And so it's getting even worse. It's like the same thing with emails. Like before you could send like a couple emails and you'd be able to connect with people. We're seeing a bigger and bigger increase of people where it's taking more touch points in order for them to actually take action. And it's just because on a day-to-day -day basis, we're bombarded with like thousands of messages, like whether it's email, billboards, social media, like all these different things. So like you have to be able to break through the noise. And the only way to do that was with consistency. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. So with the Facebook pixel, a lot of people might not even know what that is. So yeah. it's a piece of code you put on the site. And in return, when you're ready to advertise to them on social media, you can put your ad in front of just the people that have been to your website based on what, um, what pages they were on or what you want yep. to advertise to them. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that's probably very easy. It only, it doesn't take that long to set up, but you nope. do need a professional probably to show you where to put it, um, where to grab it and then what to do with it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's literally, like you said, it's just like a simple piece of code. Although it's very simple, it is very complex in what it can actually do. That's why it's considered like a smart pixel. Um, you could liken it into like cookies, and most people are some, uh, familiar with cookies. This is like a cookie on steroids. It gets much more advanced than what people think it is, and there's different levels of what you can use for it. Um, like a good example would be like if somebody was selling like supplements. You can create it to where like people are seeing specific supplements. Or yeah. if it's like a chiropractor where they're just wanting to get like an increase like you can just have it where they're showing something that's specific to like the services that they offer there's so many opportunities with it but yeah it's just a matter of like getting it installed and then you just have to start building the audience around it and then that's where you start to get really in-depth data and that's what we're really looking for is the data to make better marketing decisions yeah the one thing i was going to point out was i noticed a lot of people have social media links to their facebook mm -hmm. page or twitter and you click on it it takes them to the web hosting page they don't even have those linked up correctly. So yeah. that's just a minor, minor thing that people could check and make sure people aren't leaving your brand. They're sticking with you. They're not going to another website. Yeah. And another good point on that would be to make sure your links are visible. Um, I've gone to a ton of websites where they're buried deep down at the bottom. And so like you want to have them above the fold, which is always like when somebody first lands on the website, like right position, like maybe up in the, like the top right corner or something like that. And then you can place them again at the bottom. So if they get all the way to the bottom and then they still decide to click on it, you have it in two places. But most people have the very down at the very bottom and it's like microscopic and it's not even like a color. So it's like blending in with the background. So you never see it. And so you never click on that stuff. And it's, it's something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's because when somebody creates that website for them, it could be like five years ago when like social media was just starting out, like really kind of picking up. And so it wasn't that important but now you want to have it prominently displayed. Yeah, and I like how you have um, right at the top of your website, a let's chat button. And that's yeah. something we use a lot also is, so nobody really wants to scroll around and get lost on your site. You're giving them a button to go to and they can connect with you right away. Yeah, so that's actually built around this concept called the grunt test, so like G-R-U-N-T. So essentially like as if a caveman was come to your website and he goes like, Ugh. like he would understand what your website is in like five seconds or less. And you can actually test this on anybody. So like if like uh, any type of business wanted to go to like a Starbucks and they go and just walk up to like some random person and say like, hey, I'm gonna show you my website. And in five seconds or less, I need you to be able to tell me what I do, 
how does it fix my problem and how do I buy or connect with me? And if that doesn't happen, then I need to change my website. And it's a really simple test, but it's very powerful because most of the times when you go on people's websites, like all of a sudden, like you're bombarded with like all this information and our brain literally just go into overload and they're like, uh, I, I don't know where I need to click. Like, what, wait, so much text. Like, why is there so much text? And they just, their brain shuts down and like mal malfunctions. And then they're like, okay, I'm leaving this website. Like, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. But if you have like a simple, you know, clear call to action, what is it that you do? How does it solve their problem? You're going to increase the likelihood of people actually wanting to convert by getting in contact with you. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for clarifying that too. Yeah. I like that. I think Absolutely. it could help a lot of people out too. Yeah. Can, can you give us like one success story or one thing that you've seen really change somebody or help their business out? Yeah. So one of the biggest things it comes down to is going beyond that initial touch point. Yeah. Um, you know, even if somebody like contacts you on your page and they send in an inquiry of like more information, you have to be able to follow up with them fast. Like the, the magic range is within 15 minutes. I mean, that's like lead generation. So like if somebody's asking you for more information and you don't respond to them within a certain time frame, they're just gonna ignore you completely because they just feel like you're not willing to pay attention. Uh, that could be as simple as something like on a Facebook message. I test this out all the time myself. So like I'll go to people's Facebook pages and I'll send them a message like, hey, I have a quick question for you. And sometimes they have it where it's like the automated message where it replies and it's like, hey, we'll be back with you as soon as possible which is good, like have that auto reply message. Uh, you could also add on to it, like um, if, you if you're really looking to get in contact with us right away, feel free to call us, we'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions. But if that message goes unresponded for like two, three, yeah. four days, I'm like, okay, this person just doesn't care. Like you're busy, but you need to have somebody dedicated then that can answer these messages because the way we're communicating is more through text than call. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk, but yep. um, like Gary Vaynerchuk, there's actually this keynote speech that he's doing and he actually does a poll in the audience. And he's like, how many of you guys get upset when somebody calls you yep. versus somebody sending you a text message? And like half the crowd raised their hand and it's not something that people need to take offense to, but it's the way we communicate is different today. Like you need to be sending messages to people because it's not about the communication itself, but it's about us communicating on our time. Like, yep. like you said, it's all about you in a sense of like, well, when do you want to communicate with somebody? Yep. So having those different things set up to where you're replying to people immediately, making sure that you're getting in contact with them, like in the way that they want to communicate and adapting your strategy to how they're thinking about the problem is really what's going to push people forward as far as getting more business faster. Right. One mistake, okay. um, I actually had somebody respond back from 2014 to my <laughs> Facebook message. Wow. And, uh, hey, thanks for uh, showing interest in our gym. And I wrote back, I said, hey, I, I messaged you three years ago. And said, he said, oops, uh, that was my assistant was, um, you know, ne neglecting the Facebook page. Wow. Like, wow. So that, well, that goes to show a lot right there. I just got to think like how many messages did they have though that was stockpiled from like three years ago. So that means like he literally went through every single one and was like, oh, I should respond to these people three years later. Like, yeah, I, I mean, you kind of missed your opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And not noticing the date either was pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, that's so, a little oversight. <laughs> so if you guys aren't checking that consistently, following up with leads right away, I mean, yeah. I've even tested it. I usually have three different businesses open for things. So I, whoever responds to the first one is the one I'll go with. So if, if somebody has three different gyms or three different chiropractic offices open in their area, they're trying to decide, you send a message to all three, whoever responds first with my answer, yeah. I'm going with. Yeah, so you could be potentially losing a ton of money just by the fact of you not responding quick enough. And there's, there's literally no excuse nowadays for you not to be able to have methods in place to where you can have that taken care of. I mean even if you need to hire like a virtual assistant, like yeah. you could have somebody that's cheap that can reply to these messages just to make sure that you're getting in contact with them as soon as possible. That way you're not losing these opportunities. I mean, there's just, the technology that we have today is just so advanced and it's gonna get even more advanced when like artificial intelligence and like all these different things start to come into play. I mean, you can even have a chat bot now for those messages. So like I can set it up to where like a developer goes in 
and pre-writes out like responses to people's responses. So if it's like, hey, what are your hours? You can pre-populate with all your frequently asked questions that you normally have to answer the phone for or reply manually. And you can have this, where, what are your hours today? Oh, we are open from nine to six. Oh, fantastic. When would you like to come in for your appointment? And then you have it where it auto-populates where you can schedule an appointment right away. And now you don't even have to touch it. And they're already scheduled to come in. You're like, oh, hey, I have a person coming in tomorrow at three. I didn't even talk to them, right? Like there's no excuse. That's awesome. Actually, um, we have one set up, if you don't mind me showing it real quick. Yeah, go for it. I'll show the audience. I like to show live what we're talking about if we can. So I'm going to do a quick yeah. screen share so anybody watching can check it out. And I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't even ask you to bring it up. So thank you. That was perfect. No worries. All right, you can see my screen, right? Yep. All right, perfect. So guys, we set this up. Somebody comes to our site for a fitness site. Hey, thanks for finding us. All they did was click on a simple button, and now I yep. give them three choices seeing what they want. So I'll bring it actually right to the button. So just like um, Greg said, have a button right there, the uh, right? We're telling them where we're at, seeing if we're yep. local, and then we want them to chat with us directly. And we're going to take them right into Facebook Messenger automatically. And this is automatically following up with them. But I think it goes even further. So now when I call them and get in contact with them, I'm going to know exactly what they want, what they're interested yeah, in. Yeah, right? exactly. So this, this person, they might be interested in my classes, my training, my membership, my acupuncture, my chiropractic, whatever. So let's say they're interested in training. Now I'm giving them an option. Are you guys interested in a male or female? You know, and now, now I know they want a female or a male trainer at my gym and they're setting up a consultation with me right there on the page. So just like, I'm glad you brought that up, Greg. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And the cool thing about that is you're shortening the sales cycle. Yeah. So by you asking them the questions that you normally have to ask them within the first five minutes, you've already clarified all that stuff. And now your message when you get on the phone, like you said, is super specific to what they want. So now instead of you saying like, oh, well, do you want a male or a female or like membership or this and that, and you're like, Hey, so I saw that you're interested in our membership program and that you wanted to have a, a male trainer. Our trainers start at XYZ price. Um, we can get you scheduled today. Would you like to have your first session today? I would, yes, absolutely. Okay, five minutes, you're done. Now you've already generated that. Same thing can happen for like any other business. And it just, it's all about the timing. Like we, we only have 24 hours in a day and it seems like as we've gotten more technology, we have less and less time in a day because we just have so much going on. So you just have to be quick and to the point and everything has to be hyper targeted. It's not enough to be broad anymore. Like you have to be specifically speaking that person's language so that they instantly feel like there's a connection and that they understand like that you understand them. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, that's awesome. And so I think, you know, people hire health and fitness and business owners because they need a coach, they need someone to help them. So all businesses need a coach also. I have a mentor, I have a coach to help me. I'm sure yep. you had one also. So find somebody that fits you. You have to build a relationship with that person, somebody that you can build a trust trust with, reach out to them, see how fast they respond, Yeah. right? <laughs> and, if, and so we definitely recommend somebody find a coach that can help with their digital marketing also. So yeah. captivebranding.com is your website. Yes. Um, your Facebook page, um, Greg, Nowaki.com. Did I say it right that time? Yeah, Greg Nowaki. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Is that which one's best for them to get started with you? Or where are you going to respond the fastest? So usually on my personal page, I respond the fastest. Cool. And the reason why is that I've been focusing more on building my personal brand. Yep. Um, we've had a big shift in like the market as far as people are res more responsive to like an actual personality as opposed to the brand itself. That's not to say that you shouldn't still have like a business website. But when it comes to like just engaging with people, the personality branding side of it is so much more powerful because it's person to person as opposed to like brand to person. Um, right. So yeah, usually for me, like my fastest way is like on my personal Instagram, which I have set up as a business profile, but then also like my personal Facebook or even my uh, Facebook business page that is me. And then, um, I mean, there's so many different ways of getting in contact with me, but like I'm always like checking everything like sporadically. I'm like, oh, Got a message here. Like, okay, got to check here. So, and I'm sure you have all the apps on your phone to notify you no matter what. I got every single app you could possibly imagine. I think my phone has like no more storage because of it. That's awesome. 
Well, that, I think that's great. And I, we definitely recommend you, Greg. We've looked over your business, so keep up the good work. I want to encourage everyone watching, you know, find a good coach, a good mentor that can help you um, accelerate either your health or your business, um, depending on where you're at. And we recommend Greg's services. You're in California, but you can work with somebody worldwide, right? Yeah, I'm not limited to my geography. Um, I have done more local, but now I'm starting to expand nationally. And then at some point, you know, I, I believe taking on international clients is well within range. It's just a matter of clearly setting the expectations and what we need to do just simply by doing it online and making sure that like everything is taken care of and that they're happy with what the services that's being provided. Okay, awesome. And everyone watching, I want to encourage you guys, if you think Greg uh, brought you any value in any way, please leave a comment comment or a share. Share it with somebody that you think needs to watch it. So thanks again, Greg. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate it.